All right. Hey, Julie. Hey, Aaron. So, hey, everyone. I'm Aaron. I uh, host the 107 Degrees podcast about Mora. And um, if you follow the case, you know that there's a tendency to get wrapped up in some of the rabbit holes and theories and all of that stuff. But we thought it would be a good chance. It's Mora's 38th birthday. So, that would be a good idea to just stop and try to talk about more as the person. Um, so we have Julie here and she's going to talk a little bit about what she's been doing today in the new initiative. Um, so, so who have you spoken to so far? Well, um, first, thanks for doing this and, and putting this together and um, chatting with me. Um, as you know, this is a special day. Uh, it's Mars' 38th birthday, um, and with that, uh, my family and I decided to launch a new website. Um, and so, uh, the website is uh, not only a tribute to Mara, uh, but it's also going to serve as a resource for the public um, to be able to have direct access to um, the latest and greatest case information um, and information related to Mara directly from the people that knew her best, her family uh, and, and friends that, that help on the case. So with that, today I have been nonstop conducting interviews and talking to different people. Um, we are very fortunate to be able to say that um, multiple Boston and New Hampshire media outlets have decided to cover Mara's birthday, which um, is really unheard of. Uh, and so I'm super thankful for, for that and for the small army of volunteers that have helped me um, make this happen. Uh, I think Mara would be proud. I know my, my dad's proud. Um, I know my whole family is proud. Um, so yeah, so today is normally a day of reflection uh, on Mara. Usually it's a, a happy time. It's not so, so much sad uh, as is the anniversary. Um, so I've just been chatting with my family, um, reminiscing about um, stories and memories of Mara growing up, and uh, yeah, it's been a great day so far. That's awesome. So, so the the website, the way I sort of understood it is, it's not just like a tribute to Mara, but also like a way to engage the community that is rather active <laughs> in this case. Um, so we are going to be taking some questions if people have any, they can leave them in the comments section. But I did want to ask you one question. Is this, so this is the, the homepage behind me. And there's a quote about how that's your favorite picture of Mora. Do you remember like when it was taken or why it's your favorite picture? Yeah, that's a good question. So it, I love that picture of Mara because obviously her smile is like just emanates through the whole picture. And uh, it kind of seems like, I don't know exactly where it was taken, but it seems like it's probably at some sort of cross-country race or some sort of out, outdoor activity. And uh, for anyone that knows my family or Mara or the case, they know that we're all outdoorsy type people. So our happiest times were somewhere outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I like about this picture is um, she's wearing my sweatshirt in it. And uh, I don't know. She probably, yeah. she probably stole it from me and I never got it back, but um, I don't know. It's just super special. I just love that picture. That's funny. Yeah. There's another picture where it says like, she, you can see the Julie. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one, that was one good thing about having uh, sisters relatively close in age. We could all steal each other's their yeah. stuff. Now, of course, Mara was the youngest, so she got the short end of the stick and had all the hand-me-downs. So um, yeah, we were super close growing up and, you know, we, we would share, share, I say in quotes, uh, our, yeah. each other's clothes and stuff. I get it. Some of my favorite, uh, pieces of clothing are borrowed from my sister. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Curtis couldn't be here cause he, he had to work today, mm -hmm. but one of the things that I remember him saying was that he credits Mora with sort of getting him to come out of his shell and teaching him to, to like take more risks and sort of be more assertive in life. Um, is there something that 
you think about like that she taught you or that you learned from Mar? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'm, I was always a more serious one um, of all the kids, I would say. And Mara was a little less serious. So sh she would always try to get me to like loosen up or relax or just like straight make fun of me, um, which is great. Like talking smack to your older sister and just, you know, she in serious times, like before a race, she'd like say something witty or try to make me laugh and I'd like slap her and be like come on and I'm trying to be serious here um so she definitely uh kind of made me relax and sort of enjoy life more um but I think more importantly um her disappearance has changed obviously changed my entire life but it did uh make me realize how, how short life is and how limited time you have with people you don't know when you know when they're going to go missing or, or you don't know how long people are going to have. Um, so I, I value friendships and family time and quality time a lot more um, because of Mara. Um, yeah. And Curtis just uh, left a comment. Love you, Julie. Wish I wasn't stuck at work. Excited for things to come. Thanks to all the, all the community for the support. No. Oh. Um, one story that uh I wasn't ex expecting to be so memorable for me was this is we were supposed to be at crime crime con this past weekend obviously it didn't happen but um I think somebody asked you a question it was like how has your life been different and I don't know if you even remember what the answer was but I, I remember when she asked I was like how could you possibly answer that question it's an impossible question but I think what you said was pretty, pretty interesting and profound. Do you remember at all? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, not specifically. Okay. <laughs> it had to do with um, being sent out to Iraq, and the the friend or the the person that went in your in your place, and how your your dad thanked her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when when Mara went missing, I had just signed in to my unit at Fort Bragg and my unit was getting ready to deploy to Iraq. Um, and we, my unit deployed in platoons. So our company has four, four or so platoons and my platoon was next up for the deployment. Um, and I was going through all of that, getting ready to, to do that, to, to make that deployment when I got the call that Mara was missing. Um, so that's like the, if this could, if this scenario could be any worse, it could be me having to deploy to Iraq at the same time. Um, so one of my now really, really close friends, one of my closest friends in the world, uh, stepped up in a big way and said, Julie, I got it. I'm going to take your, your place and you're going to stay here and I'm going to go. You figure this out. Um, and so that was, you know, that was the first couple months I can't remember exactly what month we were supposed to deploy but um, it's like incredible uh, acts of kindness like that that started and then it just continued to happen over and over and over for 16 years um, and my dad was so moved by it that he wrote a, a long letter um, for those that don't know my dad he likes to write <laughs> and so he wrote pretty much like perfect 10 page prose thanking my friend so much for um, stepping up and, and going in my place. Um, but um, it's just small, uh, not small, but, but it's people like that that have been um, surrounding this case that uh, really, it does touch you. And um, yeah, there's no words to, to thank you is not enough. Um, right. But, yeah. Yeah, I was touched by that. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna see if we have any questions. Okay. Um, there's a lot of prayers. Mm -hmm. 
So while you're going through that, selecting a, a question, um, I just want to um, say that today is also really special too because today's a pretty powerful day for the Murray family because um, our mom passed away 11 years ago on Mars birthday um, in 2009 to cancer. Um, and it's pretty incredible how it happened. Um, she really, really fought a long time and she was on life support and she would not let go until Mars birthday. Um, so May 4th is pretty significant for my family. Yeah. I remember that from the oxygen show too. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Curtis mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, so one person asked, what's your favorite part of the website? Well, my favorite part of the website to share is the pictures, because with each picture, uh, my family and I were able to go in and give a little anecdote about what, what the picture means or kind of the backstory or a little bit about Mara. Um, and some of these pictures are brand new, so people haven't seen them before, but many of you know, there's only a finite number of pictures that we have. And so some of them are repeats, but we're able to give a little insight into what's going on um, with a picture or where it was. Um, so that's my first, I love, I, I love the website. I'm yeah. so happy with it, but that's my first thing. And I'm so excited to share. The other thing I love is the blog section. So there's a tab with the blog um, and it's going to allow my family, um, people working on different uh, invest or searches, um, uh, direct link to what's going on for me to share with the public um, through that blog. So you have that. And then you've also got this cool feature where people can sign up um, and they don't even have to go to the website now. They can sign up, put their email in, and then get an email notification. Hey, here's some new new news or a cool story or something that's going on with Mara Murray. Um, so I love that picture too. Uh, my family and I plan to keep up with this site, keep it updated. It's going to be the latest and greatest, the one stop um, resource for um, the actual facts of the case. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Scott asked, uh, what plans are there moving forward this year? Well, the plan is and always has been, we're going to find Mara. Uh, and that's kind of the catalyst behind doing this site. Um, I said in many of my interviews today that um, cold cases, by definition, go cold as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Mara's case has done the exact opposite. Right. So the community continues to grow and grow as time goes on, which is the coolest thing ever. Like the phenomenon of that alone, it's just fascinating. How does this case at 16 years old get multiple coverage, you know, hits on, on her birthday 16 years yeah. later? So to answer the question, I want to harness that. I want to harness the power of this community. Um, and I want, um, I, I'm hoping something is, gets shaken loose so that we can get a piece or the pieces that we need to solve the case. So um, that's, that's why we have the website. Um, plan is to find more to leverage the community leverage the power we're not going away um we're not going to be stopped uh and i really think this could be the year that's awesome uh another person asked do you uh which birthday do you think Mora enjoyed the most and what age was she <laughs> getting hard oh. <laughs> yeah, that is a hard one. Probably like, uh, what what birthday can you get your license? Sixteen. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah probably that. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, Mara likes to drive, and she she likes to drive fast. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't. I think so. Um, it's interesting because all the other, not all the other kids, but uh, my oldest sister, Kathleen. Curtis, my dad, my mom, and me all have birthdays in October. So we always had like a joint birthday party. And so we would always feel like, it's kind of like having our birthday near Christmas. You kind of feel like short change a little bit. Um, so Mara always had her own, her own separate birthday in May. 
and my older brother Freddie, his birthday's in June, so there was some separation there, so we could truly have a celebration just for her. Yeah, uh, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a details question. Can you speak to the incident that happened the day Mora disappeared, where Dick M, assuming McKean, pulled a HPD vehicle out of a ditch? I think there's some confusion for some as to who it was. Yeah, that, that was always a um, sort of a rumor. We could never really figure out um, whether the story was true or it was just another just, uh, just theory. Uh, but recently, um, with your help, <laughs> we were able to talk to um, Dick McKean and ask him exactly, well, you know, what, what happened that day. And he was able to provide his logbook um, that showed that he pulled uh, the first officer from the scene, Cecil Smith, out of a ditch that day. And he showed us right in his logbook. It's a little suspicious keeping uh, calendars from 2004. <laughs> yeah, these detailed people. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, are there any good things coming up to look forward to in the community that, that the community can help with? good question. Yeah, it's a great question. And the first thing is go to the website and sign up, put your email in there, and then anything good that's that's going on, you're going to be the first to know. Um, but we uh, we had a GoFundMe campaign, um, and we raised a ton of funds to um, do some sample testing. Now, of course, with the global pandemic we're in, the uh, all the labs are shut down, so we haven't made too much progress on that, um, but that's the next thing that, that we're kind of focused on. Um, like I said, we get tips in all the time, so we're constantly churning, um, hoping something shakes loose. Um, but the, the next, the, next uh, the, the thing that we're looking forward to is getting those samples tested. Um, Melissa Taylor Drescher asked, uh, how is the working relationship with law enforcement and the cold case unit? Are they sharing more information? It's definitely improved. Um, it's not where I want it to be. Um, I think there's some information that they could release to the public so that we could use this powerful community that I talk about all the time. We've got thousands and thousands of people around the world, much smarter than myself. Um, we've got fresh sets of eyes that could look at some of the evidence that the cold case unit uh, may have that might not jeopardize the investigation. Listen, uh, part of not sharing information is to protect um, the community from a potential predator. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, but there's a flip side to that. Part of sharing information is to, all, to protect them from a predator. So, um, we're not going to be able to um, reduce that threat unless we are able to get that piece of information that we don't have. Right. Um, so that whoever's responsible, people or persons for Mars disappearance can be brought to justice. So if we truly think that that person is still out there roaming the streets, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> this is from Anonymous. Who would win a two mile? race, Julie or Mara? <laughs> that would be Mara. Um, so interesting about that, when we were doing the research for the website, um, I, I didn't forget, but I wanted to, to fact check myself on Mara's school record. She held the school record at Whitman Hanson High School for 16 years, which is incredible. Um, it was 1120. Um, and she also made it to the um, national championships for the, um, the two mile. And she finished 33rd in the entire country as a sophomore. And it wasn't even her best time. It was 11.29. So in the, on the website, there's a link to the actual results uh, of, of that meet that she qualified for um, finishing 33rd in the country, which is mind-boggling um, and also her link there's a link to her Boston Globe all scholastic cross-country um, write-up um, which she also um, she was also a sophomore when she um, received that honor 
Now, anyone from the South Shore, or from the Boston area knows how huge the Boston Globe is and to be seen all scholastic and anything mm-hmm. at any time in the Boston Globe, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and so when, if you see the full, uh, the full paper, you'll see a couple people above her is Shalene Flanagan, who was, of course, the Boston, uh, you know, Boston, uh, no, she's not from Boston. She's from North Boston, Marblehead, I believe. Um, she's right at Bomar. So those are, that's the company she was in. That's awesome. I once bragged that I ran against her. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, a couple more, I guess. This is kind of a tough one. I'm, I apologize. From Jason. So you yeah. can blame him. Okay. Um, what message of hope would you give to other families of missing persons? Well, that's a good one. Um, I met Jason at, um, at CrimeCon, um, and he's in a sort of a similar situation, not exactly the same. Um, but the message I would say is you can't stop, like you can't lose hope. You, you know, when the, the people closest to the missing person um, or the support system surrounding the family of the missing person starts to lose hope or Um, starts to just get down, you've got to do what my dad does. And he just focuses on something to do, focuses on something next, even if it's not even a viable thing, um, just to kind of keep yourself going. Because when you have that, those low periods, and when you have um, not a whole lot going on, not no tips coming in, um, that's where you know, you need, you need that support system. You need people to continue to talk about that missing person and you just need to keep fighting. Mm-hmm. Like that. All right, so maybe last question. Okay. Uh, it's from Ben, it says, hi, Julie, listening all the way from Texas. I was wondering if there might be new information in Mars case that is having your family very optimistic. I understand if there are things or details you cannot elaborate on quite yet, but it seems like there might be good news on the way. Thank you. And please hug your dad for me. Oh, (laughs) yeah. yeah. Before I answer the question, I, so I told my dad about the website. (laughs) I didn't publish the website until like late, late last night. Um, And, but I had, I told him about it early last week or maybe two weeks ago. And I'm like, dad, I'm revamping this website with the help of, you know, several volunteers because I'm not super smart with this stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, I was on it earlier today. <laughs> like, dad, no, you weren't on the website because it doesn't oh, exist. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so he, I think now, because I sent it to him this morning, I think now he gets like what it is. Um, still not <laughs> fully sure (laughs) um but he's happy with the coverage and he's he's thrilled that people are still talking about Mara and anything we can do um to keep the story alive is is what we need to do um but now I forgot the question (laughs) (laughs) Um, are there any new new leads I think it was that was keeping your family optimistic yeah I mean I say all the time, like, we're optimistic. We are, we're not letting this go. Like, this is, we're going to find more. We are going to find more. Um, and so we, we, like I said, we have leads all the time. Um, but the, the, the best lead that we have so far, you know, I can't talk about all of it, but is um, the sample testing we're doing. Um, and the fact that we have the resources to do it. And this all goes back to the power of the community. The reason why we have the resources is because of the community. Um, without that, we wouldn't be in the position that we are. Um, so I can't say thank you enough for that. Um, but hopefully, uh, if, if nothing else, the sample testing will help us kind of eliminate some of the different um, rabbit holes that we're currently pursuing. Um, and like, you know, I've said before, we really can't eliminate anything until we find Mara. Um, so when I say eliminate, I mean like shift focus. Um, right. And that goes with, you know, potential suspects as well. And it goes with theories and it goes with everything. Um, the more data so, is better. Yeah, the more data is better. And um, I feel bad for whoever's responsible because like I said, like with, with this website and this community, we're going to find more. 
and there is a link to the GoFundMe on the page, right? Yeah, uh, I think it's on the you know it's on the contact page at the bottom. So if if anyone's inclined to donate um, and has a means to do so, there's a link there uh, that you could do that. Awesome. And I don't think we actually said the the link, what the address was. <laughs> Uh, so is it uh, Mora? It's Mora Murray Missing dot org, right? Yes. Mora Murray Missing, all one word dot org. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Uh, anything else? That anything else on your mind? No. I mean. Um, I uh, I'm just thankful. Like I said. Um, if people are able to tune in to some of the um, news stories, uh, interviews I did, um, they're on today, this evening. Um, I think they start airing at 4.15, but all of that will be posted to, um, right now, the Facebook, and then we'll have a link through the website to the Facebook. So um, people can just go to the website now and get all the latest and greatest. Perfect. All right, so look out for those, everyone. Yeah, and Aaron, thank you for, for doing this and thanks everyone for listening. And yep. if you need me, go to the website and there's a way to contact me. <laughs> All right, thanks, Julie. All right, thanks, bye-bye.